we will use PHET stimulation to understand circuit behavior using basic components. Tray on the left has component which can be dragged in the main area to build circuit. Let's build a simple circuit by dragging battery and bulb. We will connect these using wires. When circuit is completed, bulb glows. Observe the intensity of the bulb when battery voltage is changed. The flow of electron is termed electron current. Electron flows from the negative terminal to positive. Conventional current or simple current behaves as if positive charge cause current flow. Conventional current flows from the positive terminal to negative. For our stimulation, we will use conventional current notation. Circuit can also be visualized in semantic mode. When conventional mode is used to represent circuit, electrons are shown traveling in positive direction as against normal electron mode. This is how it is represented as diagram in the book. Can we also add more components to the circuit? Let's introduce switch to the circuit so that we can momentarily stop the current flow. Let's add paper clips to the circuit. It is the conductor. Let's add eraser or rubber to the circuit. Flow of electron stops. Rubber is insulator. Try adding more components to the circuit and find out if they are conductor or insulator. An electron traveling through circuit encounters resistance. Resistance is the hindrance to flow of charge. While the electric potential difference established between the two terminals encourages the movement of charge. It is resistance that discourages it. Three variables affects the resistance of the material. Length, cross-sectional area and material. First variable is the total length of the wire will affect the amount of resistance. The longer the wire, the more resistance. There is a direct relationship between the amount of resistance encountered by charge and the length of wire it must traverse. After all, if resistance occurs as the result of collision between charge, carriers and the atoms of the wire, then there is likely to be more collision in a longer wire. More collision means more resistance. Second variable is cross-sectional area of the wire also affects the amount of resistance. Thick wire has great cross-sectional area then thin wire and hence less resistance. When all other variables are the same, charge will flow at a higher rate through thicker wires with great cross-sectional area than through thinner wires. Third variable is the material wire is made up of. Not all materials are created equal in terms of their conductivity ability. Some materials are better conductor than other and offer less resistance to the flow of charge. Silver is one of the best conductor but is never used in the wire of household circuit due to its cost. Copper and aluminium are among the least expensive materials with suitable conducting ability to permit their use in wires of household circuits. The conducting ability of a material is often indicated by its resistivity. The resistivity of the material is dependent upon the material's electronic structure and its temperature. For most materials, resistivity increases with increasing temperature. The graph shows resistivity value of various materials at temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Silver has least res resistivity while nichrome has very high resistivity as per the graph. Resistance is a numerical quantity that can be measured and expressed mathematically. The standard metric unit of resistance is the ohm, represented by the Greek letter omega. As per the equation, 
the resistance of a wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire and inversely proportional to the cross sectional area of the wire. If we keep the length and the area of conductor constant, resistance of the conductor is proportional to resistivity.